Welcome to our ACCA APC online study. In this video, first of all, we're going to be discussing about the benefit of joining our online course to study your ACC exams. And secondly, we will be talking you through about the syllabus changes from the September December 2016 for the ACCA papers and how it will affect your study in the upcoming exam. My name is Steve and I'm the member of ACCA and also I'm the member of Chartered Institute of Security and Investment in the UK. I've been teaching students from more than 60 countries. I also lecture in different universities, mainly in China, currently. I started my career as the auditor and worked as the accountant in a few years and now I dedicate myself into education. I'm sure using my approach will certainly help with your ACCA exam success in the upcoming setting. So first of all, you can study ACCA course face to face by joining a local tuition provider. Alternatively, you can go for a distance learning provider. So for example, APC is the ACCA Go learning provider. By studying the ACC exams online, it will be very, very flexible because uh, you will be able to watch all of our videos such as this, going through all of these syllabus and it's quite flexible because you can study at your own pace. You can study where you want and when you want, etc. You will never miss a lecture unlike in a traditional classroom course. And of course you can ask a tutor anytime you want and you will get answered for the academic questions within 24 hours. So, if you, if you would like to join our course, please contact our colleague or go to our website www.globalapc.com and if you want to get this uh, note, a copy of this note about the syllabus changes and so on, you can contact our colleague Jackie. Okay, so here's just to be the introduction for our course. Right, so in the second part of this video, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the uh, syllabus changes from September, December 2016 onwards um, because some of the papers uh, for the syllabus, uh, there's lots of changes in there uh, than other papers, so you have to be aware of this before you progress your study. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the P7 onwards or backwards if you like uh, from P7 to P5, P4 etc. So first of all we got the P7 advanced audit and assurance. So what does that mean? So this paper is all about testing you the auditing knowledge that you've learned in the F8 audit and assurance but at the same time focusing on the IFRS or the International Financial Reporting Standards that you have already learned in your paper too. So in this paper, P7, although there's been changes in the syllabus adding or deleting something, but to be perfectly honest, uh, the syllabus hasn't changed quite a lot. And um, that's all that's for the P7. So for example, um, for example, we've got a new learning outcome identifying the additional information to plan the audit successfully and also the new requirements for the uh, related to new learning outcome by determining the form and content of the unmodified audit report, assessing the appropriateness of the content of the unmodified audit report. But to be perfectly honest, uh, although it's the change in syllabus, but it's just to be a recap from what you've learned in the F8. Of course, we will be going through that in our course, don't worry. Okay, so that's the P7, not many changes in there. Except for P5, Advanced Performance Management. So that's all about the management accounting paper that you've seen in your paper F5, Management Accounting, or Performance Management uh, to be accurate, because F2 is Management Accounting, and then F5, Performance Management, and then P5, we got extra word called advanced. There's been lots and lots of changes in the P5 syllabus. 
But the start mate in the P5 is more difficult. Well, from my perspective, the answer for that is no. P5 becomes easier because lots of this content has been deleted from the P5 syllabus already. So, for example, high-level corporate performance objective. How we're gonna uh, arrive at those objectives and so on? It's been deleted, and so on and so forth, including the planning gap. Okay, so have been deleted as well, um, and also beyond budgeting has been deleted. That's the main change to the syllabus, and beyond budgeting remains in the F5 syllabus, but it's been deleted from the P5. And also, the business integration uh, and, and also empowering staff to manage sectors of a business. This hasn't been tested uh, by the P4 examiners yet. And it's been outdated now, it's been deleted. Absolutely fine. It does not affect uh, our current study and so on. And also for environmental management accounting, input and output analysis has been deleted, remain other ways to account for the environmental impacts and so on. And also, the effectiveness of traditional management accounting techniques within a rapidly changing business environment have been deleted. But actually, it hasn't been tested by examiner yet, so Deleted, absolutely fine. It does not affect uh, anything. And also, impact of governmental regulations and policies on the performance measurement techniques and so on. So you don't have to spend a lot of time uh, discussing about the uh, economic factors and so on, uh, affecting performance measurement. So that's the reason why the P5 uh, paper has been easier than before from my perspective. And also the impact of responsibility and accounting on information requirement because that's just to be the F2 stuff. That's just to be the management accounting stuff in your early study. I'm sure many of you have got exemption from the F2, but that does not affect your study at all. And also, crucial objective survival and business growth hasn't been tested quite a lot in the past. And also related to stock markets, share value and so on, has been deleted. And also we delete the implications of growing emphasis on non-financial performance indicators. But does that mean that the non-financial performance indicators will not be tested again? Of course, no. Okay, but just to be the learning outcome has been deleted does not necessarily mean that we don't have to study those non-financial performance indicators and so on. And also uh, discriminate between quality, quality assurance, quality control, and quality management. Um, we have to study the total quality management and its application to the modern business environment. Advice on the structure and benefits of quality management systems and quality, quality certification, such as join the ISO and so on. Yes, we don't have to study that again. But we have to apply this philosophy or lean philosophy into a modern manufacturing business environment. And also we added the things that we've seen here in your syllabus and also we delete the performance prism model in your P5. And also we delete something that we uh, have been tested in the past quite a lot uh, including discuss the issues surrounding the use of targets in the public sector organisations uh, but we still have to focus more on the public sector organisations performance management issues but just the tiny to be issues have been deleted from the syllabus that does not affect our current study quite a lot really but overall, the P5, as you can say, from my perspective, it would be much easier at the same time. It will be fitting into our current uh, world when we operate a business because you look at the syllabus, it's quite practical. Okay? 
So that's the reason why P5 is one of the optional papers that I recommend you to choose if you work in the um, company and so on. Right, so now let's have a look at the P4 is the Advanced Financial Management. Many students have commented that a P4 is a disaster, it's the bloody paper to them. But from my perspective, if you follow my approach, you'll find the P4 relatively easy for you to pass. Especially dealing with the, uh, for example, the futures questions, options, swaps and so on. You'll find those very, very interesting. I always say to my students that if you want to choose a paper or not choose another paper, you want to study this or not study this, the first thing that you need to know or need to look at, it is not whether or not this will be difficult or not difficult. Because whether or not this will be difficult or not difficult, it will really depend upon different people. For example, if you love mathematics, you find people relatively interesting. If you don't like mathematics, you'll find P4 a disaster. So try the P4 first, for example, look at the P4 because I always say to my students that P4 syllabus is very, very practical. So if you want to work as the investment manager in the investment bank, and also if you want to act as the treasurer in a large organization, P4 is the best paper for you to choose. So, regards to P4, uh, quite a few things have been, um, quite a few things has been modified and deleted and tested. But mainly, first of all, we add something called the behavioral finance. So, behavioral finance. So that means when we're looking at the stock market, we used to discuss uh, discuss a concept called the efficient market hypothesis. So efficient market hypothesis, we assume that market may be efficient, and hence it would reflect the information in the stock market incorporated into the share price. So we can't use, for example, the technical analysis to predict the future share price and so on. But in this case, we've ignored the behavioral, fi uh, behavioral factors, which means the psychological factors of human beings. Because if you look at the past share price in a few years or two, you will see the human psychology affects the share price very much. And that's the reason why we need to discuss about that concept as the, from my perspective, the emerging issues, um, but it's been uh, assisted for uh, uh, quite a long time really, but now we introduce that to the syllabus. So behavioral finance, we have to study in that in the paper for exam. Secondly, the economic value added methods in appraising a project or valuing a business have not been tested, will not be tested, I should say, will not be tested by the P4 anymore. That remains in the P5 syllabus, but it's been removed from P4 syllabus. And also reverse takeover will be tested in the P4 as well. So what do I mean by reverse takeover is I'm not a populistic company, but I want to list my company onto a stock exchange. One of the ways that I can do is to purchase an existing populistic company which might be underperforming, so I can list my companies directly. So that's what I mean by reverse takeover. So those will be the issues in the P4, and we will be going through all of them in much greater depth that you need to know in order to ensure you a pass in the upcoming sitting exam. So, from my perspective, that the examining team for the P4 has the habit, really, this is a habit of examining something that has been already introduced to the new syllabus in the upcoming sitting exam. So, make sure that you're aware of the new aspect of the exam, of the syllabus, so that you uh, may find a few questions regarding those areas uh, in the upcoming sitting exam. So, Let's now move on to paper three, business analysis. Oh, good news, no change to the syllabus. But for the business analysis, from the ACCA's point of view, because most of the accounting stuff uh, has become more and more popular across the globe now. 
And that's the reason why in the paper three exam, unlike in the past, yes, although we've introduced quite a lot to this month with accounting issues from 2011 onwards into the syllabus. But ACCA will plan to introduce more and more monthly accounting stuff application in the paper for exam uh, as well. So make sure that your F5 knowledge will be absolutely sound before you study the uh, paper for business analysis. But if you study here for the APC, of course we'll be going through all of these monthly accounting issues that you need to know from the F5 uh, in the paper F5 and bring that to the paper frame. Okay, so we'll find the course very, very practical and very, very useful to exam. So, paper two, P2, if you say that. Corporate reporting, oh, good news again, no change to the syllabus. But what do I mean by corporate reporting is the financial reporting, or we can call it the advanced financial reporting that you study from paper F7. But now it starts the paper P2, it's the higher level stuff from your, what you've seen in the paper F7. So lots of similarities between these two paper, to be perfectly honest with you. And for the paper two, no change in the current syllabus, but that does not necessarily mean that no change in the things that the examining team is going to examine anymore. Because in the paper two, you also need to focus upon the current issues. So current issues, questions may be tested in the paper two. So you have to keep an eye on to IFRS, uh, latest exposure draft, discussion paper, and so on. Those, um, those issues may be tested in the paper two. Okay, so uh, no new accounting standards uh, currently has been introduced to the P2 examining document. Paper one is governance risk snafix. Good news again, no change in the syllabus. So that means in the P level, P1, 2, 3, syllabus does not change, but P4, 5, 7, I don't teach paper six, P4, 5, 7, syllabus changed. Especially for P5, lots of changes in there. So now let's look at the paper F9 again. Good news, fortunately, there's been no change, no change in the current syllabus. But in the paper F8, audit and assurance, there will be some of the changes in the syllabus. But from my perspective, although there have been changes in the syllabus, but most of them are quite similar to what we've studied before. Although it's been changed in the syllabus, but I don't think that there will be a lot of change in the syllabus, to be perfectly honest, because those were the things that we've studied before. That just to be the same as what we've studied before. So you can take a look at that from my perspective, or you can stick to the current materials that you've got. That's absolutely fine. But for the paper F7, some changes been made from the syllabus. So, for example, in the F7, the foreign currency issues, for example, the ICE number 21, have been included there because many students have struggled with the Forex uh, accounting uh, treatment that they've studied in the paper too. That's the reason why in Ulster Better Prepare for those candidates for the ICE number 21, we introduced that concept here. Okay, so that's the main change. As well as the non for profit making organisations, financial reporting as well. And also how we're going to um, do the accounting treatment related to disposable subsidiary uh, because that's the Peter stuff but now we introduce that in the paper F7 as well because we need to prepare our candidates better when they start the paper too and so on. Deletions, yes, uh, you can look at that on your own. For the paper F5 performance management there be no changes in the current syllabus, that's good news because from my perspective, from my perspective, that the paper F5 very, very low pass rates in the F level of our study. Quite a lot of students have commented that the paper F5 is the most difficult paper in the F level of their study. So 
no change in the server, so that means um, I mean paper F5 from my perspective is all about the multiple accounting. Uh, you have to have studied the multiple accounting stuff even though you have got exemption for paper F5 because you will see all of those issues popping up again when you study the paper free business analysis later. But no change to the syllabus, good news. So that's all for the syllabus coverage uh, for the syllabus change from September to December 2016 onwards. Uh, quite interesting syllabus and quite practical syllabus and uh, very, very good syllabus indeed for ACCA. So if you want to get a copy of this note about the uh, changes in syllabus and so on, you can contact our colleague Jackie. Jackie at ACCAAPC.com. He will be able to send you that uh, copy of this note if you send him an email. At the same time, if you're interested in our ACCA course going through the 100% of the syllabus, practicing quite a lot of his past exam questions uh, together with our PACE, you can go to our website www.globalapc.com. We are ACC approved learning provider and you can rely on our study materials to pass your uh, ACCA qualification exams. Happy studying and I must say that the ACCA qualification is very very tough and you have to spend a lot of time in that and you have to work really hard in order to pass this particular paper or pass this particular qualification. There will be lots of benefits you get this qualification to, um, to help with your career success. Uh, so that's the reason why ACC is quite valuable indeed. And also we provide the services if you uh, were to go ahead with your, for example, the Oxford Bros University project, we can provide the mentoring service. And I'm also one of the uh, registered mentor at OBU as well. And also we can help with your MSc uh, projects, if you like, with the London University. And um, that's all. So uh, that's the section for the syllabus change from September, December 2016 onwards. And good luck with the exam and best of luck. Uh, if possible. Hope to see you in the actual class. Bye for now and good luck with your study then.